Hello everyone, I'm Gandare, Dominion Archivist, and I have dug up these videos of the Four Players Liga Dominion Tournament, which was a League of Legends Dominion Tournament that happened on the Europe West server. These games in particular are from the 45th week of the tournament that went on there. It was from 2012. This particular tournament ran on a Monday instead of a Sunday because there were server issues the day before. The commentator for this game that you're about to listen to and watch is Recycled Goods. Uh, so enjoy this look back in the past from, you know, 2017 or whenever the heck you might be watching it. Back to 2012, week 45, on a Monday of all days when this tournament happened. Right, folks, it looks like we will be starting the final game of week 45 of the 4PL Dominion Tournament. This is a best of one between Tie Boys Inclement on the right and Real Terror on the left. We do have Ross Gasm subbing for Tie Boys Inclement this week, and we do have Amnestara and Inceptions. I think Inceptions are sub, I mean, he might be an occasional sub, I'm not sure how he works for their team, for Real Terror. And three members of Real Terror this week are former members of Scrubs. So it's more a Scrubs lineup than a Real Terror lineup, but we'll have to see how it goes. We are now in the pick and ban phase. First ban, Ergot. Dominus Art does play a good Ergot bot lane. Good scaling, good poke, good bully. Also quite useful top lane as well. Casting has been banned. First ban on the purple team at the minute. High mobility champion, high CC. Good at shutting down mages and other targets. The high mobility is insane. And he isn't held back by his lack of farm like he is on someone's rift. And that is the next ban. And then Jax afterwards. Both good scaling into late game. Good gap close and good at shutting down the squishy targets. Will he leave Jace open this week? That's the question for real tech app for Thai boys. They left Jace open one week intentionally, apparently, and then they uh, and then they got what you call it. Cassidy, they left that open intentionally the week after. I'm not playing any more music disc. Well, I might play your song actually in the run up to the next in the run up to the actual game when we get into the next phase. We will get the summoner blockers up now. The summoner blockers are now up. And I don't know if Elise will become flavour of the month. She's kind of a bit lacking in most most respects, in my own opinion. Jace has been banned by Real Terror at the minute. <laughs> Perhaps they know that Tide Boys don't like banning Jace slash Cassidy so often. They have left one of them open each tournament thus far, and Yorick does come out as the final ban from Tide Boys Inc. Strong bot laner. Can push many an advantage. Very, very strong push. Good sustain. Good at long term lanes, short term lanes, stomp lanes. He just excels bot lane. He is made for that lane, and his ultimate does give him extra time to delay and hold off until people do arrive. We do have Cillian first pick and Wukong. We did see Wukong and Incep Inceptions on Wukong last game, and he did have a very good performance with a few very good ultimates, knocking up and doing a lot of damage to a lot of team members. Dominus Arth does pick up the Lulu, however, denying uh, denying Cillian of the Lulu pick, which he's a big, big fan of. Roscasm will probably be playing Lulu, I'd expect, although we have seen Dominus Arts play Lulu bot lane in a tournament before, possibly more than one. Odd bot lane, but we've seen it happen. And SPG now, so Ezreal is still open, I'm kind of expecting an S pick here, can't be certain however. Bastard one does prefer Corky however, so that will be the carry of choice, unless they go for Kha'Zix again, which did work out quite well from last game. <coughs> Any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat, and I, am, I will answer everything to the best of my knowledge. Don't have any pick yet. What will we see? Pantheon picked up by SPG Neo Style. Very strong early to mid game. Good ganks as well with his ultimate. Strong in general. Good champion. Although his late game is kind of lackluster. He does pack quite a bit of damage and does have a stun. And his ultimate does grant a lot of, grant a lot of map. Um, well, just a lot of map presence. And Amnestara has picked up the Poppy. That will almost without a doubt go to Scrubex, who is very, very well known for his Poppy play. Lots of burst. Brilliant at taking out squishy targets very fast. And high mobility once again, and her ultimate does mean that she can do the tower diving. And that's the one, we've got to see what he picks up here. Could be Ezreal, could be Corky, I don't... Although, there are two carries up for grabs, so he could just wait it out and pick someone else if they've got another pick that they do want early. We do have Malphite picking up. No, what you call... uh, Malphite picked up by Bastard one. That'll probably go to Cillian, I'd assume. Good tank, good at shutting down also attack base champions, so if they do pick up a carry or a squishy between... Poppy and Malphite they, and Wukong, they will be able to shut it down and take it out very fast. 
Chronicle, stop calling Zemp names, you bad person. He's the admin, and I think he's in this chat as well. And Malphite was locked in, very strong tank, but last game he didn't go against many auto attackers. They picked the team intentionally, not very auto attack based heavy after they seen the Malphite pick up. But with Jax, they couldn't leave him open either. See what the next two picks are. Gander in the minion chat. Lovely of bigging myself up in chat there. My apologies, face. It does look like we may get a rhythm pick. Bone Crusher and SPG and SR. Oh, Dominus Arts, actually. I completely forgot. Three members of the team can play Riven and. Dominus Arts is well known for his Riven bot, very strong bot laner, can snowball very strong, and the Sara also plays Riven. We do see a new new Vayne picked up by the looks of things. Very, very strong combo there. The early game on Vayne is lacking, but a new new Vayne's potential damage output is absolutely absurd. With the Blood Boil granting extra movement speed, it will help dodge Bastamon's Ma at well, whoever ends up playing Malphite there, and will potentially help the target of new new at Poppy Ultimate get out of range and stop, of that, stop of getting a full combo off. True damage is also very strong against resistance builders like... Uh, oh, and it negates Poppy passive as well. True damage is very strong and Vayne scaling into late game is insane, especially with Lulu and Nunu there to pick her up and keep her, keep her safe. And right team indeed. It is a bit difficult to call who will be playing what. I can't say for certain. I really don't know. On the left hand side, however, I do feel it will be Inceptions on Wukong, Scrub X on Poppy. Cillian on Malphite, and we've got to see what these final two picks will be. On the right-hand side, we do see a Protect the Carry Camp in full action here. And we get Kha'Zix and Corky picked up again. I'd expect probably Bass the One's going to be picking up the Corky there. That's quite AD heavy, however. They don't have magic. Oh, well, Puppy does have quite a bit of magic damage. Probably be either Cor I I'm expecting Corky bot lane on Anastara. Could be Kha'Zix as well. Both can hold lane and do pretty well. Um, now we've got to see what Knights is going to pick here. We, I, I feel like we're probably going to see a bot laner come out, and Jin Zhao is picked up here. We don't see him very often at all. Very strong duelist, good scaling, good gap closing, can slip to a target very well, and his ultimate's very good for getting out of a gank as well. Will it swap to the Eve? Oh, he's trolling us now. We've just got to see what comes up. Not that Eve is trolling, does have its place. Just got to see what we get picked here. And I know, shout out to Discworld here, does like his Jin Zhao, he likes going balls deep, but I'm going to counter shout out to you here, Disc, you like going too deep. Withdraw the balls, man, withdraw the balls! They didn't ban Mordekaiser! Well, hey, Chronicle gets to play Mordekaiser in the third place playoffs. And, oh, will it be Elise? It is Elise, so I think we will be seeing SPG Neo Star playing Elise in the finals. Definitely something we wouldn't have expected there, and Heathen Hammer will be very, very happy in chat. At least not deemed a top tier pick by most people, but SPG Neostar is one of our few at least players and does seem to do pretty damn well with it whenever he does play it. Did play it in the first game this tournament, in the round 16 game. Did pretty well, didn't land many stuns that game though. May land quite a few this game, we can hope for the best. And it looks like it will be SPG Neostar on Elise. Dominus Arts on Vayne, Bone Crusher on Nunu, Roscasm on Lulu, and Knights on Pantheon. Roscasm is a known support player. Bone Crusher does play a good Nunu. SPG Neostar is the Elise player. Dominus Arts can play Vayne top or bot. Could be Knights bot on Pantheon as well, actually. And we will see Cillian on Malphite, as called. Cool. Bastard One on Corky, as called. Cool. Kha'Zix on Amnestara, most likely bot lane, as called. Cool. Hey, I called all these ones right. Inceptions on Wukong, and Scrubex on Puppy. You see one garrison for each side, one Ignite. And everything else exhaust with full revives for each team. Let's get the summoner blockers off so you can see for yourselves. And I will mute myself to put another song on that Disc requested just until the game starts, folks. I didn't realize that he put music in this. I gotta, I gotta mute that and I gotta fast forward.
Okay, it looks like we are past the musical interlude that Recycled Goods put in it. Uh, I mute it because music's copywritten and things on YouTube, and we can't have that on there. Uh, I'm able to post uh, anything that was broadcast on DD on to YouTube for archival purposes, so there we are. And uh, it looks like we open up with a pause here. I'm going to turn it back over to our commentator who did it at the time, Recycled Goods, getting back into that VOD audio now. We do have a pause at the very start of the game here, and the Sarah hasn't connected yet. But this will be the finals of 4PR Week 45 between Real Terror on the left and Tie Boys Inc. on the right-hand side. And we do have Cillian playing Malphite, Bath the One playing Corky, and the Sarah playing Karzik, Inceptions playing Wukong, and Scrubex playing Poppy. He is pretty well known for his Poppy play, that's for certain. So expect things, expect things this game. Let's put the expectations up for him. And we do have, on the right-hand side, won't let me move as we pause. Dominus Arts on Riven. We do have SPG Neo Style on Elise. A very, very odd pick. Not something you'd expect very often at all. And the first, he has made the only two picks in the tournament of Elise. One in the finals as well. Very odd. Bone Crusher 93 on Nunu. Ross Gasm on Lulu, which did deny Cillian of his Lulu there. And Knights on Pantheon. Just got to wait until the pause break ends here, folks, and then we can get on with the finals of this week. Any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat, and I will answer all of them to the best of my knowledge. I am Recycled Goods, you cast her for this week's tournament. I also cast Dominate Dominion tournament last, uh, two nights ago. And we've just got to wait it out. Is he not connected yet? Oh, blimmin' out. Let's get some music back on. I'll finish off this song. We'll play music, seems we're going to have at least another three minutes until Pineapple is back in game. I like how I'm in 2017 and Dominion disconnects are still ruining everything. Gosh darn it. Let me find out where the, uh, the, the, the reconnect point is and then I'll bring the audio back. What is this production value? Recycled goods, what have you done? That wasn't a criticism. I think this is hilarious, by the way. I just don't even... Looks like, looks like we're good here. Alright folks, it does look like another new player will be coming in to sub, as we have had a few issues. Yep, yeah, they are remaking, I will get the invite to the next game now, and we've just got to wait to get into the game. Music-wise, it's definitely not going to be opera, you're listening to Grime until the next game commences. It will be the same picks and bands as before, I do believe, but with possibly Necrogym Bot instead of Amnestara, we'll have to see. And my browsers have crashed again, why is everything dying on me now? Boy, that's a good question past Recycled Goods. Uh, I, I, I gotta switch the, to the next video file, so bear with me while I tape this together. Uh, I could do this with all the cuts and things, but I feel like it's more entertaining this way, and nobody likes jump cuts, because it's always a question of what got cut. Let's go over here to my other folder. Okay, so it looks like we're going for... Oh, I gotta mute that. 
There we go. And let's see, part three. This right here. Okay. I gotta get. I gotta find where there's no music. Okay, we got it. We're going over to Recycled Goods to cast the finals of this game where uh, a connection issue caused a last-minute sub to have to be brought in in order to play out the game. So let's hear it from Recycled Goods from here on. Howdy viewers, apologies for the issues, and the Sarah did have connection issues, had to restart his computer, took about half an hour, he's now reconnected, but they do have a sub in place, being Necrogen, only one HP, this is the 4PL Dominion Tournament, week 45, this is the finals between Real Terror on the left, and Tie Boys Inc. on the right hand side, Tie Boys Inc. also have a sub in Rosgasm, they have denied the Lulu of Cillian, in terms of picks, we do have Scrubex on Poppy, he's quite well known for his Poppy, Cillian on Malphite, Bath One on Corky, he's known carry player, Inceptions on Wukong, he is the bruiser player typically, and only one HP, the bot laner, also Necrogen on Kha'Zix. On the right hand side we do have Dominus Arts on Vayne, looks set to potentially be going bot lane, Ali uh, SPG near style on Elise, he is one of the very few uh, Elise players around. Knights on Pantheon, he is the bruiser player again there, Bone Crusher 93 on Nunu, he's a tanky support player, and Rosgasm on Lulu, support player, and a, a denied pick there. Oh, brilliant. They say a change of runes, but they did get a sub in. I'm sure it's all fine. We will be fine. Fear not. And we'll wait until this gets started at 1 minute 20, and then we'll get the casting in full flow. Any questions in regards to Dominion or anything else, feel free to ask on the Twitch chat, and I will answer anything I can to the best of my knowledge in any downtime between plays. We do see casual conversation coming out between the teams. That's one good thing about the Dominion community, is that everyone does generally know each other quite well, so it's quite an upbeat, friendly atmosphere most of the time. That's a quick summary and recap, and we will be seeing Dominus Arts on Vayne, bot lane, against only one HP, on Kha'Zix. And Kha'Zix has went for a mana pot there, and Vayne has just went for Prospects of Blade and two health pots. And any interesting builds? We do see two Kindle Gems, one on Lulu, one on Nunu, one will probably grab Zeke, I guess, potentially, although they don't have that much to benefit from the attack speed, besides the... They have got... I guess it'll be a least benefit net fr benefiting most from the Blood Boil buff. The stun does miss there, doesn't hit Bastard 1, but Knights nice, does land a Spear Shot and Bone Crusher with Blood Boil is top lane very fast. The sections is now there as well. At least does land, land the Spiders for a bit of extra harass. We do see Scrubex lying around the top. Not the strongest of level 1s on Poppy. She does have high mana cost, but she is quite durable, which is pretty useful, especially with a double door and shield start. And it's just the next change of poke at the minute. It is the finals. Knife team wants to throw it. Five. Five euros of RP up for stakes, that's 800 RP, and we do see Inceptions going in, but disengaged on by Lulu there. Knights is at the back there, taking a lot of harass, but Scrubex went deep as well, and Elise is taking him out with Bone Crusher. Elise does wrap up, managing to dodge the ground slam, I do believe, but does jump back in on Corky, meaning it does take extra harass, and Elise is taken out. Bone Crusher and Roscasm do manage to escape, do look like they're going further back in, just to prevent any further capping and neutralise. Keep it neutral as long as possible, as they do look set to have lost that fight. Revive has been used by SPG Neostar and Knights who are back, but I don't think they will be able to stop this cap. No, they won't. Revives were used, but the cap wasn't stopped, so free cap has gone in favour of Real Terror in the first fight. We do see Vayne is out pushing Kha'Zix until he has evolved rockets. He won't be able to clear that way particularly fast, so he will struggle from being out pushed, even by Vayne. He doesn't have the strongest of early games or push. He should be able to out harass him and doesn't have to burn mana to trade. So that's one advantage in Vayne's favour there. We do, see, we do see Elise grabbing the Sword Shield buff there, she does benefit quite a bit from the extra damage, her flat health, if, if, if they're around mid health, her Qs don't do particularly much damage, but the Storm Shield buff will add a little bit extra to that, and I know with CDR her Q cooldown is around 3.91 seconds, and they are going for a back door, Elise is there to delay, Scrub X does land the stun, and a bit of a combo there, delaying them a bit further, 
and a little bit of exercise. Cillian is on the way to try and prevent the cat, but Lulu and Lulu will get neutralised at least. Wukong is also on his way, and Malfoy will go for the grass. He does get the kill on Roscasm, almost get a full cap there, Bone Crusher, but the grass line does stop it. Inception does close the gap on Lulu, who isn't particularly tanky early. Malfoy does all in, as does Inception there. As they won the first fight, they did get to level 6 first. Elise has just turned level 6, she doesn't get that much from it. Bone Crusher is also level 6 out. Yeah, going for the Empire there. But the Poppy knockback did prevent any further damage. The stun does go off on Poppy, meaning that the chase is slowed down there. Pantheon is pushing on top, but Corky packs quite a bit of push himself. Knights did go out of position a little bit there, overextended to get the stun down on Corky. Inception does get more harass out and return, and Roscasm does get an ultimate off there on Lulu. But Vision is granted by Lulu, meaning they do see the clown, and Inception's look set to be taken down. Yet the Heart Seeker Strike Guaranteed Crit does take him out. There are a bit of an extra push. There is an e a bit of an extra push coming on top here. Wu Kong has used revive and is on his way back. Poppy is also on her way back top now. Knights is low mana on low half, so they are on the weaker end of this fight. If the fight is May, but they are all backing off. Not much is going to come of it. But Nunu has picked up a Zeke Herald. At least will benefit quite heavily from that. The attack speed in particular. And um, Douglas asks, "What's he evolved?" And yes, he has evolved rockets first. That's pretty pretty much essential. Bot lane, you do need that extra Persian triple rockets with the slow attached does lead to quite a bit of extra push. Bone Crusher has encountered Necrogen in the jungle there. I mean, they do know what's coming. Necrogen has went for a brutalizer early. We do see three mate people mobilizing around the speed shrine. At least can face check that. Well, doesn't have to face check that. Burst of the spiders do check for. She does land a stun, and a lot of poke does go out on Cillian in return there. But they don't want to engage. The Kree Wave is pushing quite heavily down mid there, and top is now the objective, but that it has been pinged, so they intend to put a bit of attention down there. She did face check that bush that time, meaning she did take a bit of damage and return it, and Elise is quite squishy early game. Scrubex did, oh, and almost manages to pick up Dominus Arts, but Dominus Arts just narrowly escaped. Scrubex does have the Storm Shield buff for extra damage there. I think Storm Shield damage is increased during Poppy Ultimate, as I know true damage and everything else is. Knight does look set to be taken down with isolated damage there by Necrogen, uh, by Necrogen on Cloud 6. Poppy is getting the cap down. Bone Crusher, will he stop the cap? No, it is a neutralized there, but Dominus Arts does manage to pick up Wukong there. Wukong got the strongest of duelists. True damage is looking set to take out Scrubex, and a new new blood boil in a vein leads to a lot of damage. More true damage procs and a carry with an extra attack speed boost is good. And she gets the extra movement speed from the blood boil and benefits heavily from that as well. Nice is back and does have his ultimate if they want to go for an engage top, but SPG Neo style is about 60% health at the minute. So they are just countering the push. Bastard one is positioning, ready for a fight pretty much. But as it stands, I think Real Terror will be happy to just leave it at three point at three cap and bleed the points out. The stun does land on Bastard One. A bit of a huge new combo coming out from Elise there. She does wrap in to finish the job and does manage to finish the job. Lulu does manage to save Elise from the tower damage as well. And Garrison was used there by Lulu just to make sure Elise did escape. Nice is there now as well. Stun does miss, but more damage went out on Inceptions in that trade, meaning there are two low health, low mana. Well, Malphite is low mana. He is going to go for the health relic, but. Alfion does get the stun in there. He is taken incredibly low. SPG Neo Star is taken out during the Wukong Ultimate. No, the shield does go up from Lulu and the exhaust. Just live. The repel does save his life pretty much there. It is a best of one, the finals though. Grab Kazas. Here, yeah, this is a best of one in the finals. And Poppy does land a stun on Lulu in the corner there, but does take a bit of trade damage in return from Pantheon. The cap is going down, but they're in a bit of a troublesome situation here as Corky and Malphite are on the way back to top, but Lulu is going for a gank bot lane. Blood Boil Vein is a big concern. Does land the condensed stun. He is going to try and jump the wall. They will go for the free cat whilst this is up. He is jumping over the wall. He will probably go for a W poke to stop the Nunu cat, but does just start Nunu. There is a Crete wave and a vein cap in the turret at the minute. Does get another rocket poke off there, and Wukong does come to help him out as well, but it does look like this turret will eventually go down <coughs> in Ty Boy's favour. New New Vein is a devastating combo. The extra attack speed means more true silver bolt stacks, and the extra movement speed means she does stick to targets incredibly well and escape gaps. But Blood Ball isn't up anymore, and Poppy is closing the gap. Just land one stun, doesn't land the stun, but does get in range for a pretty big blow there. Is it devastating blow? Yeah, devastating blow, I did think so. Quite a bit, of, uh, quite a devastating blow from devastating blow there. But while there are three bot top aren't capitalising for Tie Boy. Cillian is alone at the minute, but full health, full mana, and he does. No, he doesn't have Garrison. So they can go for a cap here. Cillian will probably go for an engage. His ultimate isn't up. Does get the Q off onto Roscasm there, preventing the cap a little bit further as Elise stops as well. And it looks like this will be a neutralised, but Scrubex is there. Does try and land the stern onto Elise, but Lulu does knock up the puppet. And Elise, oh, she didn't troll pull. She went for the stun instead. Pretty much removing the utility that that ultimate grabs from Poppy. That troll pull and that stun 
do take a lot of time off that puppy. But Inception does jump in and manages to pick up a lease there with a EQ combo. Lulu is there on, a, on her own now, trying to defend against those. But Nunu does manage to pick up puppy. Quite surprising. It's now two supports versus a low half tank and a low half bruiser. But Corky is now here to support as well. Nunu tries to go for an ultimate. Doesn't quite finish off Cillian, but the snowball will finish Cillian off. Nunu is rather tanky, so we'll take quite a bit of abuse from Bath 1 and Inceptions, but no! The Phosphorus Bomb does do enough damage, so the Turf one can take him out before Inceptions is taken out, and Storm Shield buff is down. Wukong is a very strong pick, does have a lot of teamfight utility, and that South Clone is quite useful, although Lulu is quite useful against that. They do have Lightbring down here, meaning more true Super Bolt Sacks, and that Kha'Zix doesn't get to use his Arthur Stealth in a way. Not nice, not nice. And Dominus Axe is just pushing down the lane at the minute, but Kha'Zix W does look set to clear the way pretty pretty quickly. But a fed vein should probably win duels versus pretty much everything. Endgame at least, it's just a case of getting to that endgame. And Nunu is ganking again. Blood Ball does come up on vein, and the snowball is down. They do have vision, meaning that Dominus Axe can keep up the chase. Doesn't get enough damage to take out Necrogen, who does go back in for another rocket. Vein gets another true silver bolts back off, but it's not enough to kill him with the early ranks of true silver bolts. Level 3 at the minute. Although it does look like the top lane, SPG Neo Cell and Knight have both been taken out, and Roskazm is alone defending against Inceptions, Bath the 1 and Cilia. Does get a little light soft defend, defending for a little bit longer, does get the ultimate with its slow aura and its knock up. Fence and Cat gets a glitter lance to stop all of them capping. Bath the 1 is taking quite a bit of damage there, but the three of them do look set to continue capping. Scrubbox was back capping whilst that was all occurring, but Fane and Nuni did manage to get Kazix's point bot lane. And Elise doesn't manage to stop all of them. Does get a still on Malphite, but can't stop all three of them capping at the same time, sadly. And Poppy is coming in behind Dominus Arts, trying on the flank. Dominus Arts does use his ultimate, goes to the stealth there. You can see the bigger bolts as well when his ult is up. Blood Bolt is down the slow, has arrived from Necadron there. But he does look set to be picked off if he doesn't get a jump soon. Does go in range. Didn't quite have a stun lined up there, Scrub X either. The ult has been used on Nunu, but the snowball does mean that Vayne should be able to stay out of range. With the blood boil up as well, that's a very fast vein, and Poppy will be taken out as soon as the rule ends. Yet, Poppy has been taken out, and Boxer will be going back into Ty Boy's favour. It's not looking good for Necrogen at the minute, and Bastard 1 and Inceptions don't like the rods of fighting a new new vein at the minute, so are going back top to hold a point instead of trying to retake one. Malphite is there to try and defend the point. His garrison has been used, providing extra attack speed and splash damage onto the turret, but Inceptions is stuck between a Lulu and a Pantheon at the minute. Lulu is taking a bit of poke exhaust, has been used on Pantheon, and Elise is split off from the fight there, meaning that Rothgasm is taken out very fast. The sun does land on Bastion 1. Quite a bit of damage coming out from Elise there. Dominus Arts is now top lane, meaning that Nunu is bot, and there is a fed carry top lane against Cecilium on Malphite, but Ground Slam does massively reduce Vayne's overall damage, meaning he won't be able to defend this point, but Nunu is holding bot, so it is free cap in Time Boy's favour at the minute, but it looks like their mid will be capped again. Does look like the main credit of the match at the minute is Dominus Arts and Bone Crusher. they are doing a lot of work but even though mid is being lost Pantheon did terminate his ult there didn't think people would get there in time didn't want to walk in and dive for his team rather the stun does land on Cillian I mean he will be taken out by Elise's Q at the end will Creeps cap it? no Roscasm is capping on Lulu preventing the Creeps from finishing the job as it stands with Nunu there holding bot Nunu is very low health Necrodrum's rather low but doesn't look set to land the rockets does miss the rockets so Bone Crusher does get out alive but they will get their bot turret back, and Nunu is recalling at the minute. Bastard 1 is pushing the wave and heading back up to top turret. But we do see a top fight occurring. Scrubex has been caught by a stun combo there. Stun from Pantheon, stun from Elise, and the finishing off when low health on Elise is very, very strong. Interesting to leave to note, it looks like we will be getting a Royal Eyes out of Elise. She does have pretty low base resistances, even with Rules Ultimate up, and I'd assume that that Codex will be going into a Nash's Tooth. She does scale quite well. Oh, she is caught out of position there. Does get the stern on Scrub X though. But Inceptions has been glitter lance, meaning he won't close the gap. Though he can E to her spider limbs is one thing to thank now. Looks like a big gank will be going bot lane. Dominus Arts and Nunu there. Lots of damage. Necrogen will be taken out there. Poppy is alone against Nunu Vayne. And we've seen how that turned out last time. So if I do have peels and with Blood Balls movement speed buffs, you probably can't stick very well at all. Not a, not a very nice come from Poppy. SPG Neo Star does get caught in Inception's ultimate there, but in... Knight is there to zone out the remainder of the team and sacrifice himself. Take one for the team there, effectively. SPG Neostar and Roscasm do get out of that alive. Though SPG Neostar is low health, does get a shield on him for a bit of extra speed, and Glitter Lance does land slow in Malphite's chase. It's now a three man push against two people, one of which is rather low health. Bastard 1 is going aggressive, Hunter. Oh, the Lulu Walk doesn't save him. Malphite all and Bastard 1's overall aggression do manage to take out SPG Neostar on a lease there. Roscasm is taken out in swift fashion afterwards. But SPG Neo Style did revive, repelled onwards to Corky, but didn't manage to close the gap enough. Pantheon is here to help. 
Gets the stun on Cillian. Cillian is looking set to be taken out. No, he isn't taken out yet. Will they close the gap in time? Yes, the slow is landed and Cillian is taken out by Elise and Pantheon. Vayne does die to Necrodge in bot lane, but Bone Crusher on Nunu is there to try and pick up the kill. Will the snowball do it? Oh, not quite enough damage, meaning he does get to the half rope in time, but another snowball and a couple of auto attacks mean that Necrogen should die here. Nunu Bot using Spam Laugh, that is the appropriate way to play Nunu Bot. And in that time, mid was back capped by Tie Boys. So it is looking like a free cap and two new two neutralizers against Real Terror here. Usually Real Terror strength does line the team fight, but it does seem like Tie Boys have had some very, very strong team fights coming out here. We do have attack speed boots onto Pantheon at the minute, I guess, with Frozen Mallet. He could be going for a more utility-based build, going for the peels, I guess. Personally, I would have went for Ninja Tabbing Merc Treads or CDR boots, but each his own. And we do have mobility boots on the new new, so he can get around Blood Bowl quick out and go for those ganks bot lane even faster. Land the snowballs, but bot lane, we do have Inceptions taken out. Lightbringer is on vain, meaning she does have this Muffin Malphite all is used. Dominus is taken very low, gets stuff another time, but past the one, Cillian and Necrogen are here to try and clean up. Nice jumps into the free Bone Crusher. Can't stay in the fight, he's out of mana and low on health. Necrogen did use his jump, Jaw and Pantheon dying, so he doesn't get the refresh there. But they are still holding three points with Blood Boil being all they need to counter the push and clear up the wave. Snowball does go up to prevent any further harass and allow a bit of chase. True damage combo coming out from Vayne there, dropping Necrogen quite significantly in a single combo. A Blood Boil Vayne probably doesn't even need Snowballs to beat the Corky at the minute, and it is a bot lane farm Vayne as well. We do have a Triforce and a Lightbringer coming out on Vayne. So she is going for a more utility build than a Phantom Dancer Infinity Edge style crit build. SPG in the air, so I did drop on the stop. Just trying to duke around the corner there. Does get the stun on Cillian, but most of the damage isn't coming from Cillian there. Lulu, will it get a Glit Lance off? Will it Glit Lance or will Inceptions catch it? Cillian does. Oh, Cillian and Bast do see Pantheon there, but Pantheon and Lulu do close the gap on Bastard 1. Exhaust has been used on both Corky and Pantheon. Lulu Wall does come up, knocking up Bastard 1, and a Nunu Wall is coming up now. Does manage to take out Pantheon. Oh. That uh, does manage to take out Corky. Pantheon cleaning up on the kills here. 15% health or under, and you've got a guaranteed critical strike from Pantheon. Scorex did try to line up a stun there, but it didn't land. And Knights will be taken out by a revive team. That is the main strength of revive. When it's up, a fight isn't a 4v4. You do get extra lives. And Scrubs does land a good stun there after Cillian gets a ultimate off on one person. SPG Neo Soul is alone against the free here. There's not much he can do. Will he try and play with W? No, Cillian is going for zoning in there. He is trying to get close enough to get the W off. He does. Will he get in range for a counter Corky? He looks like he'll be taken out beforehand. Bone Crusher does get a Blood Ball down. So at least he's in range, but he is picked up by Corky. But the turret is still just, just being held by Tie Boys at the minute. And Garrison isn't up on Nunu, so this is looking set to be neutral. Ah, Garrison isn't up on Lulu. So yeah, this is looking set to be neutralised. But Pantheon is jumping on top of Scrubex. And Corky, Corky does Valkyrie out there. Farm is killed. Meaning the turret is going to stay neutral at the minute. Corky does have rockets to poke. He's got three saved at the minute. And Scrubex comes around the back. The stun does go down on Scrubex, but the ultimate does come off. Onto Nunu, meaning Pantheon can't stun or hurt it, and Nunu wasn't in range to get the snowball off. The stun did land, and Pantheon was taken out. Nunu does get Glyph Lance and Vision on Wukong, so knows exactly where he is, but can't really duel them at the minute, not until Elise arrives at least. At the minute we do see Mobilize, and it does look like Poppy is going for a pen-based build, but with mobility boots. Triforce damage is converted into magic damage by devastating blow, which is quite useful. Does mean Spell Pen is very strong on it. SPG Near Style does grab the Storm Shield on the lease there. Does have quite low cooldowns. Lulu Vane are bot. They do realise Poppy is there with Lulu, I think. Malphite and Karzix are bot lane at the minute, but there are three bot from Tie Boys Inc. at the minute. See, will they wait until Malphite is gone? Malphite is gone. Vane is pushing the lane on around at the minute. Malphite does come back round, but will get vision onto Nunu and Lulu and knows not to go in there. Creep Wave is pushing in Tie Boy's favour top lane at the minute, but Inceptions is there to deal with it and farm it. SPG Neo Star and Knights are waiting for someone to come into mid, but Nunu Vane are engaging on Poppy. Poppy will be taken out very, very fast by all that true damage. Stun from Elise does land, guaranteeing the kill. The Lulu ult on Vane does come up, meaning she is pretty tanky with that. At least does manage to repel onto where Corky was, but Valkyrie did stop any further chase. Dumbass ass is taken out though. As their bot lane went top, so did Necrogen. And Necrogen with his evolved wings can jump jump between other targets and jump as much as he likes after a killer assist. Very similar mechanic to how Trist works. Knights will be taken out and Inceptions will narrowly escape. It is now a Lulu and a, a Lulu and a Nunu. 
trying to get out of there. Blood Bowl does go up, meaning he is fast enough to escape, and Lulu does have a speed boost to south, meaning they do get out of there, but it is still a three-point cap for Real Terror at the minute. The points are bleeding out on Ty Boy's favour, uh, in Real Terror's favour. There's no sweeper top lane, but we do see an Oracle's coming out on Bone Crusher there. That will grant vision of the Wukong and of the Kha'Zix before Lightbringer or, um, what do you call it, Lulu do get into sight. And we do see a Rhylize and a Nash's Tooth coming out on Elise. She does look set to be going for an Abyssal Scepter next, which will negate some of Corky's damage, some of Poppy's damage. And there we go. Necrogen is taken out very fast by a late game new new vein. Look at that damage. Dominus Arts does carry on attacking on the clone there though, even with vision. Big creep wave pushing down onto real uh, Tyball's bottom turret. The new new has gone to try and clean that up just to hold the objective. It has been neutralised, but a Wukong and a Poppy are on the way to try and deal with Vein, but the Blood Boil mobility boost does mean they do manage to get out of there. Randwiz has been used, meaning that Vein is stuck in place and does have reduced attack speed, but the Condemned does push Poppy out of range. Trying to slow the kite, but the exhaust has been used as well. Devastating Blade doesn't quite take out Vein, and the point is neutral, so where they're returning, they don't have a tower to protect them. Who knew does go in to delay the cap, he is pretty tanky, Frozen Heart, Aegis of the Legion and a Zeke's Herald at the minute. And the Giant's about on top, he is pretty tanky, but there is pressure coming on from Bath the One and Cillian onto the mid turret. Roscasm is low health, but Pantheon is on full health, so they will be able to deal with that. Nunu is alone here though, and trying to delay too, until Vayne and Elise come back to try and help at the minute. If they don't recap the turret though, it does look like Real Terror will win the game. Inceptions has been condemned into all, all the Stunders land, but Kazix isolated Q does deal with Nunu very, very fast. Blood Bowl is still up for Vayne. She does use rules but there, does get a lot of damage off and just narrowly gets out of the way of, um, what do you call it, Kha'Zix there. Sorry, I'm saying what you call it, folks. It's been a while of streaming now. And Scrubex does get out of there. Bastard One is coming as well to deal with Dominus Arts, who is low half of Valkyrie, and the Phosphorus Bomb will take Vayne out very quickly. Elise is going, trying to clean up Poppy, but that speed is absolutely insane. Speed Shrine and a W grant a lot of speed. A W currently grants 25% movement speed. That's a lot of movement speed. And it does look like Elise is heading back top lane. She is full, ha full health, nearly full mana. Nunu is going back bot, however. Lulu is still bot as well, so they might want to send one of the supporting tank folks top. Knight's Pantheon. Not really built for much damage at the minute. He has got the last whisper, but he's got a frozen mallet and a pair of attack speed boots. Got a brutalizer as well, but not going to be taking out Cillian particularly quick with 459 armor with his W up. That's a whole lot of armor. And I think this will probably be GG. I think Real Terror will have won here. Cillian does go in on Malphite to try and delay him. Cillian does look set to be taken down. Elise is doing a lot of damage there, but Corky and Poppy are there to try and help with a bit of more damage. SPG Neosol is looking set to be taken out at the back by Scrubex. Scrubex does all onto Poppy. I mean, he does take very little damage and does get to get a lot of damage down on Knights in the meanwhile. Devastating Blow does do a percent of your health in damage. The shield does go up from Lulu, delaying things a bit longer, but now it's just a Poppy versus Lulu. And the free cap is in real terror's favour. Ground Slam has landed on Dominus Arts, massively reducing his attack damage, and the cap has been stopped. He is tanking turret damage. Will he be taken out on turret? No, but I don't think he can actually take out Cillian at the minute. Does dodge that Grand Slam, and they do manage to kill him, but they've got five seconds until the cap. Oh, they do manage to neutralise top and bottom at the same time, meaning the points are now ticking out on the other, other side's favour. Bone Crusher does get the snowball off, but Dominus Arts is too low half to follow up on the Corky there. Elise has come to reinforce Dominus Arts, but Dominus Arts does have the Blood Boil buff from Nunu still. Does go for a triple combo. Does condemn, however, only one HP out of the stun's range on Elise. SPG in the SL. It, oh, didn't land another stun there. Vayne is coming around the back. They are trying to stop this cap as if top is capped again and bots capped again for four seconds. This game is over. And Necrogen is going for the cap whilst Bastard One does try and do the zone here. Does take quite a lot of damage from Elise. And Vayne is on her way with her ultimate there to clean him up. But the last turret hit does pick Vayne up. That was two turret hits. Otherwise, she would have killed him and got away pretty much scot free. We do see a top 5 going on, Knight's very low half taken out, Cillian Orc does go down on Roscasm, who is out of mana on Lulu, and doesn't have his ultimate, it has been used already. And it looks like with this, this will be game if they do manage to stop Bone Crusher from capping mid. Kha'Zix does get the jump down, and I think with this, this is GG, and Real Terror have won this week's 4PL tournament. Hopefully everyone, and it's not a best of three, my apologies Grab, but this is a 
well, single single elimination tournament for Pal Tournament is. And that is the finals done. Hopefully everyone had a good time viewing it. Sorry about the issues we had going on here. Well, we did have one guy not being able to connect, meaning it did take half an hour longer for the tournament to finish than it should have done. But hopefully the viewers have had a good time, and that'll be it. Recycle goods here. I was your caster for the day. And hopefully everyone has a good night. See you soon.